This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Drexel Gilbert, and we have a great show ahead for you. Coming up, we'll talk about what's new in manufacturing and computer programming at Pensacola State College. We'll see how 3D technology is making learning more exciting and catapulting students into exciting careers. And we'll take a look at the world of the lumberjack as we preview this year's Lumberjack Festival. First today in the studio, we welcome frequent guest and big friend Dan Bussey to Pensacola State Today. And Dan is the Dean of Workface, Workplace Education and Vocational Support. And you're here to talk to us today about the opportunities in the manufacturing programs at Pensacola State College, a very popular part of this college. Absolutely. The, uh, the manufacturing programs are one of the quickest ways for individuals here at Pensacola State to actually land a job. The programs that we are offering lead directly to employment to a number of local manufacturers. So um, if those individuals are interested in going from no skill set to a skill set that's employable, manufacturing is probably one of the best mechanisms in order to do that. Okay, so that's a great lead sentence, and I'm sure you've gotten a lot of people's attention right now. So let's go to the next question, which is the current programs that are being offered in the manufacturing area. Well, once again, we have uh, a really strong CNC program. That's the Computer and American Controlled. That's a... Uh, uh, a program that allows individuals to learn how to operate CNC equipment, not only to operate that equipment, but how do you go ahead and design parts and pieces that those machines will actually produce. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's a very wide open field where local manufacturers up and down the Gulf Coast are using that equipment not only to produce aerospace parts, but customized parts, jobs, uh, and, and various components um, all up and down the coast, which are uh, really well paying positions. Okay, and then what, uh, what other opportunities might be there currently for the students? Well, we're looking at a variety of different things. We've currently purchased a 3D printer, and we'll talk about that uh, yeah. a little bit later in the segment. But we're also looking on specialization in those um, cutting-edge manufacturing processes, including uh, digital design and modeling, the rapid prototyping, going from the idea mm -hmm. uh, and designing it in 3D computer modeling software all the way to a finished product where we can actually test that product to see if in fact it's going to do what we uh, hope it will do. So those are really exciting times here at Pensacola State. We again continue to work with our local business partners in the Chamber of Commerce to ensure that the programs are meeting the exact needs that our local uh, business uh, uh, folks are, are needing. We continue to have those interactions and discussions and we tweak our programs and in order to meet those needs. We purchase equipment in order to meet those needs. We revise our curriculum in order to meet those needs. So these are the tangible steps that are being taken to take the student from the classroom mm -hmm. into the workforce. Absolutely. What kind of jobs are out there and, and what kind of pay raise are we looking at? The jobs vary considerably. Um, we had one uh, individual, and I won't say the local manufacturer, they'll be inundated with uh, applications. He went through our program. He had some previous military experience. We brought him up to speed on SolidWorks uh, quality control components, and uh, he uh, had a move, but he's making $80,000 a year walking in the door, a significant life-changing uh, event for this individual. Those skill sets are marketable, not only locally, but on a national scale. Uh, manufacturing is one of the most uh, cost-effective um, programs that we have when it comes to how does it affect the economy. Those manufacturing jobs have a multiplier effect that's significant. So the cascading effect of a manufacturing job is significantly more than a tourist job, for example, working out uh, on the beach in, in the tourist industry. Okay. So manufacturing is a big push. Okay, so now let's talk about the computer area. What kind of opportunities are currently being offered there now? We have two great programs in the computer, under the computer umbrella. The one is cybersecurity, and again, you keep hearing in the news all these security mm -hmm. breaches and so forth. Our cybersecurity program is a spectacular program where individuals learn those skill sets in order to be valuable assets to a company while they walk in the door. 
We emphasize uh, credentialing, so when those employers are looking at that transcript and interviewing our, our students, they're talking about the skill sets that they learn and the credentials that they have in order to prove those skill sets. That's a huge one. Um, very, very popular, and again, the placement rate, we're doing exceptionally well locally um, uh, with that. The other one that was brought up to speed uh, just recently is our cyber forensic okay. program. That's a crossover between our criminal justice program and our cybersecurity program. How do we go about providing individuals who have the skill set to walk that fine line between the investigative portion, crime prevention, and the, and the crime um, uh, prosecution portion, and the cybersecurity? So that is another popular program that we have. And again, those individuals that are going to be completing that program will have probably no um, issues locating jobs locally. Okay, and then that was the next question, the job outlook for these students. Locally good? If they wanted to go somewhere else, I mean, I would imagine that all of these jobs, we, or areas we've just talked about, are, are really global. Yes, those skill sets are transferable. Um, but as Pensacola and the Pensacola area builds its reputation as an IT center and a cybersecurity center, those jobs are going to be more and more here. However, um, those companies are, as you indicated, global um, as well. So a number of the individuals that complete the programs, mm -hmm. they jump ship from the local area and, and move out uh, to where the, the top dollars are, if you will. But again, as the, as the uh, local economy builds in the cyber forensic and cyber security area, more and more of those individuals would be staying home. Well, and we want to keep them Absolutely. here. We want to keep that talent pool nice Absolutely. and close. So speaking of the talent pool, they're watching right now and they're interested in the programs. How do they go about becoming enrolled? It's really simple. The, um, if uh, you're computer savvy, you can go online and start the process right there. If you want to talk to somebody and meet face to face, you're more than welcome to come to campus. We have an enrollment center that would be delighted to walk you through this, the, the process and the steps. It's very, very easy. We have a great financial aid department, so if you are worried about how you're going to pay for it, they are absolute masters in providing the resources for you to take that off your plate and worry about your, uh, your studies in order to move forward. So come on down to campus, we'd be delighted to have you. If you want to call me directly, if you have any questions about any of the programs, my number is 484-1158, right to my desk. I'd be delighted to assist you in any way I can or direct you to the appropriate person. It's easy to enroll at Pensacola State. We are a welcoming uh, environment. Absolutely. We are military friendly. Um, if you haven't been in college for a while and you want to come back, we have support services that allow you to make that transition very, very neatly. Mm -hmm. Come on down. We'd be delighted to have you here. All Absolutely. Right. Well, it's always a pleasure visiting with you. You talked briefly about the 3D printer. We didn't have time to go into great detail. Give me the 30-second synopsis because we're going to have a whole segment on it right after our first break. 3D printing is cutting edge at this point, and the college is moving in that direction. Um, the 3D printing allows, as I indicated, the individual to design the product on a 3D modeling program and actually print it out within a couple hours. You can actually hold it in your hand. It's a pretty slick um, <laughs> technology, pretty slick technology, and our manufacturers locally are using that technology and we want to be able to provide individuals who have that skill set to go work in the 3D rapid prototyping arena. All right, well Dan Bussey, thanks again for coming and being with us on Pensacola State today. We always love it when you're our guest and we hope to see you back really soon. It's my pleasure. Okay, we'll take a quick break and be right back. Dan Bussey was just in the studio and we briefly touched on something new and exciting that's come to the Pensacola State College campus and we're going to talk a little bit more about the new high-tech uh, high 3D color printer that's come to PSC and in the studio to talk with us about that right now are Danny Steele who is a director of applied technology and Rodrigo Deal who is a student and very rapidly becoming a success story from PSC so thank you both for being with us today. First of all, Danny, let's start with you. Let's talk about this 3D color printer. Tell me about it. Tell me why it's so important to the college and to the program and also to the students. 
Uh, what it is, it was our first opportunity to um, introduce rapid prototyping uh, for our students. Uh, what, what I found as I began to look into it is that it is one of the front runners uh, in manufacturing. Individual companies are now taking this technology and printing things as they need them. Uh, so what I'm finding is it's such a diverse technology. If you can draw it and the materials are available, you can print it. First time I saw a 3D printed object, I saw them print a coffee cup. And I thought, how can you do that? But that's exactly what they did, they printed a coffee cup. And, and so the more I looked at that, the more intrigued I became. When I got here and became the department uh, head for the drafting at, uh, arena, uh, what I found was is that we needed to do something to put it back on track with what industry needed. Mm -hmm. And the rapid prototyping with the advent of the 3D printer was perfect for that. Okay, so tell us, just walk us through, those of us who may not be able to picture how this works in our minds, walk us through how this works. Well, it really, uh, it really relates to uh, the ability to draw three-dimensionally. So once you could draw three-dimensionally and the drafting software was there, SolidWorks, uh, Inventor with AutoCAD are two different softwares that you can draw three-dimensionally. Once you could draw it three-dimensionally, the idea was to then to be able to take that directly to a final product. So one of the things we did as a project here, of which Rodrigo was involved with, one of the things we did as a project here is we printed a clock tower. Uh, we, this, we put the students in charge of it, and they went out and they gra gathered all the information they needed to do a scaled version of the clock tower that's out on College Boulevard, and we did that. Uh, so what happens is we found that you can basically print almost anything. Uh, the uh, space station uh, has one of these printers on board because if they really need something, they can print it at the space station. They don't have to send back uh, and have another aircraft uh, bring it up and deliver it. So it really is a very interesting uh, technology that's applicable virtually everywhere. And I'll, I'll add one more thing when I say virtually everywhere. I've got a Chef AS program. Did I ever think that my chefs would have to learn 3D drawing because they're printing food now? Right, so so, so you, the idea is that there's nothing out there that's going to be left alone in general uh, from the 3D printing. Well, how exciting. Program. Okay, so to talk more with us about the exciting part of this is a student, Rodrigo Dill. And Rodrigo, let's, uh, a little background on you. You've been in the Navy for 25 plus years, that's getting right. ready to retire in August 2015. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, you have been, you attended classes, night classes at Pensacola State College for 18 months in order to gain the expertise that right. and the skills from this program. So obviously it's something worth working for. Oh, yeah. What I want to talk to you about is uh, tell me about your experience experience with the 3D printer and how it has enhanced your education? Well, when I first started this, uh, I knew I didn't want an office job, which is typically where guys coming out of my station uh, in life mm -hmm. end up going. They end up becoming a CEO someplace and, and uh, doing a lot of accounting or, or financial management. And I didn't want to have anything to do with that. I wanted to stay in the treehouse, okay. in other words. And uh, what's better to do all day than sit there and build things you love? I like it. Yeah. I uh, like it. So I knew that I had to have a job after I retired from the Navy, and I didn't really want a job, so I decided that I was going to start my own business. Okay. And I knew that I love designing and building stuff, but I just didn't have the skills to do that. You know, I was a political science major uh, okay. at the Academy a long time ago, and that and 69 cents will get you a cup of coffee at the Denny's. <laughs> you know? So if, if you need to have skills... To get a job, what better place than to come here and get them? Okay. So I wanted to design and build stuff, and I heard they had the uh, mechanical design and fabrication course. So I called Mike Cannon, and uh, the rest is history. So what happened was I took all the drafting courses, okay. uh, starting with uh, engineering graphics, and then it moved on to uh, Inventor. We did uh, 3D Mill. We did the lathe course over at, uh, at, the, uh, at the machining shop with Mike Cannon. And as I got more into the, uh, the software side of it, like the SolidWorks, I discovered that I did have a penchant for, for designing stuff. But then I saw everybody else around me that was doing the same thing. And it's pretty easy once you jump into it to start these, putting your concepts onto a computer program. And so how did you get from there then when, the, when the, you began interacting with the 3D printer? Did that just take you leaps and bounds? Yes. So we... Took the course, uh, I think it was in the springtime for, uh, for Inventor. Okay. And, uh, and the, by that time, uh, Pensacola State College had the new 3D printer in the uh, computer lab. Mm -hmm. And so I had a whole bunch of 3D designs that I'd already come up with. Um, 
things like little rotors for radio controlled airplane, little jet motors and stuff. So uh, I brought them in there and started printing them up. It was fantastic. The designs that I had in my mind were no longer just doodles on a piece of uh, eight by 11 paper or a notepad. They came out three dimensional and they were solid and I could touch them and look at them and they were real. They were alive. They were alive. <laughs> and uh, well, that's nice, but that printer is a lot more money that I can afford. But there are other printers on the market, for instance, that we went after. And uh, so now I have one uh, at our place of business, and I'm printing all kinds of parts. Okay, so let's, right now, let's stop right here and talk about how you have taken what you learned in the classroom at Pensacola State College, and you are applying it to your life and career. You're actually opening up a business because of your experience here at Pensacola State College. Yes, that's true. It, uh, it's already been incorporated. Uh, I'm working with a couple of uh, local businessmen in the area mm -hmm. who have, uh, who have uh, retained us to do their design work. And with the 3D printer and our ability to do designs in SolidWorks, uh, we're able to provide them uh, parametric modeling. Basically, uh, they'll, they'll get a, uh, an electronic file that will allow them to reproduce their designs every single time, whether it's, you know, additive manufacturing, which is 3D printing, or they can take it to a machine shop and have it built there. So uh, because of that... Uh, Here you go. You're a Pensacola State College success story, and we are so proud of you. Now, we're about to run out of time, but I got a question for you. All right. All right, so I'm looking at your business card, and the name of your business is Nutch Butter Design Labs. Explain. <laughs> well, it might sound, <laughs> sound kind of funny, but... Uh, when I was stationed out in Hawaii, uh, my, I, my son was two and a half or three years old at the time, and we were at a, at a little luau party and at this friend of ours' house. It had a really nice hard terrazzo floor. He tripped and fell. Okay. Slammed Yikes. his forehead right onto the, tra onto the tile. Ow. The whole party stopped. And we gasped, but then he just did a little push-up, stood up, looked around, wiped his forehead off, and said, much better. Uh, but it didn't come out much better. It came out much butter. So uh, that's been inspirational to me uh, ever since. And, yeah. and uh, I think it's just the attitude that, that I like to carry into uh, whatever endeavor that I'm doing in the future. So yes, always get back up and keep going. say it's much better and keep on going. Or much butter as the nutch case butter. may be. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being here, Rodrigo. Now, Danny, before we go, I want you to tell me what's ahead. What's, you've got something new coming up. Uh, we've got a couple of things uh, but, and around our three-dimensional, uh, our 3D printing process. Uh, we've just got authorization to purchase a second one, a polymer very similar to what oh. Rodrigo has. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, with that in mind, we also have a 3D scanner. And the idea that hit me the moment that I put those two together, since I also have a nails department, uh, was to take a hand and, and 3D scan the hand and then use the nail itself as the platform and then extrude off of that platform a 3D item that could be put on as a fingernail. So we can do custom fingernails as a result of that. Ooh, might I come and be a potential <laughs> client one day? Uh, we're, we're, we're actually <laughs> going to work together. Rodrigo and I are going to work together awesome. uh, to, put, to make sure that this thing is, is doable. It looks like right now that it is. And if you, go ahead. If you can dream it, you can do it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being with us today. It's so exciting. But before we go, tell us how students can get involved in this program. The easiest way is to go to the website, or you can see, and, and my name is on all the programs, drafting, et cetera, uh, that's under my department. Uh, but uh, again, Danny Steele, uh, number is 484-2522. So give me a call. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us today. And good luck with your business. Thanks. Ha thanks for having me. Sure. And we will be right back after this quick look at what's ahead at Pensacola State College. As spring approaches the Gulf Coast, flowers begin to bloom, birds begin to chirp, and the axe handles begin to fly. Well, they do at the Lumberjack Games on the Milton campus of Pensacola State. The games take place the first weekend in March. For a look at what you might see, 
we'll revisit last year's games where lots of folks, including yours truly, got a hands-on look at the world of lumberjacking. <laughs> Lumberjack festivals sort of center around all of the, um, the physical events that lumberjacks did way back in the old days. When you were in a, in a logging camp, you worked way out in the woods, and these guys were very bored, and they were very macho, and they would always brag about who was best at what. So they would challenge each other to throw the axe. Come on, come on, come on, pull, 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 pull. Who can cut through this wood fastest, who can climb this pole the fastest, and that's really how it started. And once you do it, it is, it's just addictive. And, and I've seen a lot of these people that started out as kids and they have just grown up through this. I remember the first few of them that I attended, there were probably a few hundred people maybe. And the last few, there have been quite a few. I mean, we can't, can't even get everybody on the list to be able to participate because we have so many people that want to uh, compete. He's a red tail. The Lumberjack Festivals, it's an annual event and it promotes our uh, partnership with the University of Florida. Um, you know, the, uh, the hatchet throwing, the axe throwing, and uh, the wildlife that they bring on campus. It gets people on campus and, and gets people interested in natural resources and conservation. So uh, we're happy to be able to do that here each year. There are not a lot of places anymore that you can go and just, you know, touch the knives and throw at things openly. This morning we had a, a group come of about um, 11 students and we taught them to compass and pace. And they've never used a compass in their whole life. It's connecting the tradition because we're in a place where this was heavily wooded with the longleaf yellow pine. And during those years, the men that were logging here, they had time on their hands. So when they had time on their hands, they came up with things to do to show who was the better at these things that were needed for their work, but also for fun. And so we're just living that legacy here. And this is compass and pacing right here. And we have compasses and we have a course that we go around and you have to, you have to pace off. You have to know how many steps you per, per pace for each individual. And you go around the course and the person that gets it closest to the mark at the end of the trail wins. I'm the judge of the compass and pacing competition here at the Forestry Conclave. And uh, the, the contest is orienteering, basically uh, people, compete estimating their distance and uh, direction using a compass. In the days of uh, GPS now, people don't compass and pace too much anymore, so it kind of brings them back to the, to the, the roots, I guess and kind of teaches them the old way of doing things. It's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to watch the competitions. It's a lot of fun to um, compete as well, um, which I've only been able to do a little bit. But And it's just fun for the whole family to come out. And they've got stuff for kids and all kinds of booths with all kinds of informational stuff. And it's just, it's a fun activity. It helps you remember how it was and, and also just lets you we, we get so um, distracted with all of the technology that we have now that we don't actually learn how to use stuff and this kind of shows you how it works and that's neat, neat to see and, and to have a competition where it's actually physical stuff and we're getting out and getting some exercise and, and having fun doing it. We have the, the men's, the women's, and the Jack and Jill cross-cut competition and they have a, a cross-cut saw with one guy on each end. You know, th that's time too, and it starts when the saw hits the, hits the wood, and it ends when the wood hits the ground. Wood toss where they get a piece of pulp wood that's five and a half feet long, about four and a half to five inches in diameter, and see how far they can throw it. What was it like throwing that big old piece of wood? A lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I thought I would just throw it out there about 30 feet, and I didn't even get half of that. And why did you decide to participate? I just said, well, why not? You know, uh, you might as well. Um, 
try to see um, what you can do, you, you know, and I've never done this before. I've always just come and watched, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't dare throw the axe, you know, but uh, a piece of uh, pup wood, you know, why not? Yep. Ooh. We have a log roll contest. We have a 11 foot long log that's 18 inches in diameter and they have to roll it inside of a course 50 feet and then once they get to the other side they have to turn around and they have to roll it 50 feet back staying on the inside of the course. We throw knives and axes. Um, we, we have a target set up. The, if you hit the bullseye, it's three points. If you hit the blue part, which is the nine inch ring, it's two points. And then the white ring on the outside is one point. And then we have an axe throw where you, you the same distance away from the target and we throw axes at the targets. Lumberjacks really did this. It was probably just for fun. At the end of the day, a bunch of guys standing around saying, I bet you you can't stick your axe in that tree over there. And they ended up putting a target on there and, and they started throwing axes and knives at the targets. And it's been part of the forestry conclave competition ever since. Yeah, you just clasp your fingers over it gently without really holding too much pressure on the blade. Okay. And then you'll hold that in the center, keeping it firm, like uh, almost like you're um, almost like you're pinching a, um, like a clothesline okay. uh, clamp. Okay. And then you'll just gauge for your distance, throw it whenever you feel this release about eye level, let your hand go, and it blocks. Oh, that was close though, that was real close. <laughs> That's what I did. Pretty much it. We teach children to climb trees because we teach them the safe way to climb a tree. Everybody wants to climb a tree. That's, that's great fun to get up in those trees. But you don't want your kids to do it in an unsafe manner. So when they learn a little bit about recreational tree climbing, we can access that canopy up there in a really safe manner, safe for the trees and safe for the kids. It's just an important event because of the whole atmosphere. It, it lets people know that this area was built around the logging and timber industry, so they learn a lot of history. And it kind of gets kids out of the house, away from their video games, and, and gets them to where they can enjoy some of this outdoor activity that we have. The Lumberjack Games take place Saturday, March 7th from 8 to 2 at the Milton campus of Pensacola State College. And that's going to do it for this edition of Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Drexel Gilbert. We'll see you next time.